In the 1940s, women were expected to be a certain way, and that did not include being a jazz instrumentalist. It's a good thing Marjorie Hyams ignored all that, though, because her career left a legacy that is still felt today. Marjorie Hyams was born August 9, 1920, in New York City. She came from a musical family, and her older brother, Mark, also played piano professionally during his lifetime. Miss Hyams was a trained pianist who could also sing, and she began working at nightclubs and the NBC radio studios in the early 1940s. She was already being labeled a star on the vibraphone as early as 1942. In 1944, she was heard by Woody Herman while playing in Atlantic City, and he hired her almost immediately. She made her first recordings as a side person with both Herman and saxophonist Flip Phillips later that year. After a year or so, she grew tired of the misogynistic shenanigans from some of the other band members in the Woody Herman band. She said, I just loved Woody. He was extremely open-minded. There were guys in the band who really helped me, but there were others who went out of their way to make things hard. For example, they'd move my vibes to a place on stage that wasn't easily accessible or where I wouldn't be seen. Really dumb stuff. This indeed sounds dumb, but in the research for this video, I was constantly reminded just how different and dumber things were at that time. After a while, Marjorie began playing with the Mary Lou Williams Quintet, a groundbreaking and innovative group who also happened to be all female. Here's a little taste of a tune by Mary Lou Williams called Harmony Grits. <laughs> several years, Hyams recorded with various artists and was playing piano and singing in nightclubs to make a living. All the while, she refused to conform to the female jazz stereotypes of the time. I didn't wear ball gowns, cocktail dresses, and other costumes female jazz artists wore then. I guess I was kind of arrogant to think that I could make it just on the music. She wasn't, however, because in 1949, Leonard Feather approached her and asked her to join the George Shearing Quintet. Shearing who was already a big name, went on to then later record September in the Rain with Marjorie on Vibes. It was recorded in one take and sold nearly a million copies. Hyams also participated in the recording of a brand new Shearing original, one which would later become a staple of bebop repertoire amongst musicians. <laughs> Hyams was also a formidable composer and arranger as well. As a child, she was fascinated by Art Tatum and Igor Stravinsky. And let's just take a minute to remember that both of these artists were alive and in their prime when she was growing up. So what does her music sound like? you but I said wow when I first heard that. So moving on to 1951 after roughly a decade of successfully asserting herself in a field dominated by men, Hyams got married and moved to Chicago deciding that she had had enough of constant traveling. There she happily raised her family while also continuing to play, teach, and arrange. Her husband passed away in 1978 after which she moved to California and lived until her passing on June 14th 2012 just a few weeks shy of her 92nd birthday.